Thanks for listening to the Gray Ave Podcast, a show for driven young people with big goals. We meet inspiring people from around the world and learn from them, from entrepreneurship, health, travel, lifestyle, and more. We are also on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio. Rate and write us a review. You can also download each episode on www.grayjabesi.com. Enjoy the show. Hey, what's up, unicorns? My name is Gray, and this is the Gray F Podcast, episode number 32. Uh, actually, 32 is a very significant number in some ways, I think. One of it could be that it's the total number of black squares on the board, on a chessboard, and the total number of white squares, <laughs> um, and the total number of pieces, black and white, at the beginning of the game, right before you move and mess everything up. Uh, I don't know why I'm saying this. I just feel like Magnus Carlsen already right now. Anyway, uh, so our guest today is Carissa Cupido. Uh, some of you are familiar with her, some of you not. But she is a TV and radio presenter, and she's also TLC's next great presenter 2016 finalist, or she won that competition. So it was great chatting to Carissa. Uh, she, <laughs> she covers a lot of uh, different subjects about how her, um, her job works. And how she have fun doing it. Uh, I'm not going to get into it too much because she gave her own intro. So you kind of get um, a good sense of exactly what she's all about. So it was great. And Rad, a friend of mine, was there as well. Some of you are familiar with Rad. He's the investment guy on the podcast, at least. Um, because he was on episode 21, I think, and 23. Uh, so, yeah, we talked. Uh, he's a cup surfer and um, he works in the investments world. So... He was there as well. And before we start with this podcast, I just want to point out one, a few things that you guys should know. One being the fact that um, uh, I, I received a threat. Like, some people are threatening me with a, a lawsuit uh, because of something that I said on the podcast, which I find quite hilarious. Uh, but it's all good. Nothing hectic. It's just kind of like... Um, the if if you ever watched uh, the Silicon Valley uh, TV series, uh, it's like a holy X Y Z and the Pat Piper situation. If you're familiar with that, um, so I might do a podcast at one point just to clarify this whole situation to let you guys know exactly what's happening on that side. And I was scheduled to do a podcast with Mickey Willis last week, who is a Hollywood actor. I, I think some of you are familiar with him, but he has been um, a director on, no, not a director, sorry, a producer on, I think, Breaking Band. Yeah, Breaking Band TV, uh, TV series. Uh, d- uh, also a producer on um, Be Brave, the documentary 2016, yeah, Inside Out, and oh, a lot of good stuff that he has been doing. He's the CEO of Elevate, uh, the production company in Los Angeles. So, the only thing it didn't happen, it's sad news, but that um, his Robert Stewart, who passed away last week, was his close friend. Um, for some of you who is not familiar with um, uh, Rob Stewart, he's very big. He was very big in the diving community. So he died after missing for, I think, uh, a couple of days after he made a dive and he was trying uh, re- the rebreather technique for the first time. Uh, so he actually died doing that. But he's, he's a very well-known photographer. Um, you can check out his Wikipedia. He's, he's the director of uh, Shark Water, the 2006 documentary, where he showed about the sharks and all this um, water life that he was kind of involved, uh, involved in. So it's sad news that uh, Stuart passed away. He was a great guy. And you might be asking why I'm bringing Miki on the podcast. Well, if you haven't heard anything from him i have to tell you he's an amazing guy um mickey is an amazing human being i respect his philosophy um the way he thinks and the things he stand up for uh, for example the whole hollywood community right now is um, with what's going on in the world a lot of them are afraid to speak out on the things that think that they think are wrong or not going in the correct way but Mickey is one of the few people that are speaking out, and it's amazing that he has such strengths. And also, if you want to 
know just get a hint of what Mick is all about i recommend to check out um one of the cg garage podcasts with him also it's, it's amazing you can just search mickey willis cg garage podcast you listen to the whole uh to his whole story and also other things that he actually uh advocating for he was a speaker at the trojan was a unicorn in 2016 um that's where he and uh, chris nichols from cg garage made up and did that podcast and all that i don't know if there's anything else that you guys should know before we start this oh yeah it might be the fact that uh, i will be reading one episode one email or uh, from any of you listeners that, that i get sent every time and i never had time to read them so this week i'm gonna read one from uh, jacob palonski i think he's from finland um, might be wrong but um it says hi um i found your website with the podcast in english it is great it helps me a lot with learning english thanks wow i never thought of that um thanks to you jacob paloski or it might be jacob paloski i never thought that people would use this podcast for those um side of things but uh, i think that's great and it's smart that you learning english from this uh, and it just makes sense now that i think of it so that's the only thing that i had to cover and the other thing was i think uh, i'm receiving a lot of emails from uh, you guys saying you would like to have a female to as a response to the podcast that i did with dr jonathan farley because i received so much email than ever before since i did that podcast uh, for some of you who haven't checked it out i think you gotta check it out um it covered about feminism and a lot of other things uh, which are interesting subjects to cover and some people don't agree most of you seem to not agree with them especially the female crowd do not agree with what dr farley says most guys do so you guys are saying i should bring in a female to cover um, that side as a response so i'm thinking of the greatest person i could get in that category or if you can think of anyone just shoot me an email then i will try to get hold of them anyway this was too much talk i'm been drinking too much wine i'm sorry but yeah uh enjoy this podcast with carissa it was amazing you can leave some comments or you can follow uh, carissa on instagram is carissa cupido very easy name to remember it's like carissa with double s and cupido like the cupido you know so enjoy this podcast and have fun cheers yeah man we can start so uh, it's gonna be easy for me because she is a presenter so we're yeah. gonna do the podcast differently she's just gonna do it <laughs> yeah cool wait what <laughs> what do you mean being a presenter don't have to talk you know you can just you can just go yeah you're gonna what start do you mean? Do, do the start. intro <laughs> i know this is your podcast i'm not doing intros i'm here to answer things yeah Okay, what yeah, but mean? what do you want me to say like who I am? Yeah, yeah, just like yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. You just have to take the conversation and drive. But where do I start the conversation? Why we have already started the conversation. Have you have you recorded? Yeah. We're recording right now. God, I haven't said anything. Don't worry, said it. Cool. Um so just an introduction. Sure. Uh, let me just listen if it's a uh, good. Cool. Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Is that good? Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So my name is oh, and off the table. Uh my name is Carissa Cupido. I am a presenter on radio and recently now on TV, which makes me smile to say. Um yeah, and I also do some freelance work for adverts, so um acting in commercials and stuff when I get the opportunity to do so. And besides that, do I need to go into my hobbies? <laughs> Whatever you want. Whatever. Yeah. I think I should stop there before I tell you about my knitting. Um yeah. I enjoy knitting. <laughs> um yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh what have you knitted in the last like 3 or 4 days? Well, to be honest, I've been spending about 3 years knitting a scarf. <laughs> it's going slowly. You'll see it in winter. <laughs> it's a new release. <laughs> right. So, how I'm always fascinated mm. by your surname. Oh, yeah. your your whole name. Is it real? Of course it's real. <laughs> um, my brother named me quite interestingly That's when he was 5 years old. So that was co- quite crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know where it came from or where he heard it from because at 5 years old like it's to me it's quite a complicated name to even say, pronounce. Um, but it actually it's a noun and it's a bush that um 
I feel like I should just stop there. It's a, it's a shrub, not a bush. And it bloss it has like white flowers that blossom and also red berries that come out in summer. So, I mean, you can go on a, a tangent about all the metaphors of growth and like blossoming into beauty and stuff about that, which I think is quite nice. Um, my surname is, I think, Latin. I don't know, but it's a male form of Cupid, the, the little baby with the arrow. Hmm. Right. So on your on your vlogs on YouTube, mm. you like to ask people about uh, their little story. Yeah. So maybe now you can tell a little bit about your story. Man, my story is still being written. I never know where to start when talking about it because um, I feel like it's so incomplete and like every day is just another very small step in it. But um, specifically speaking to like radio and television I guess um, growing up I I love to talk I guess I was quite a shy person because I grew up in an environment where there were a lot of colored people that didn't necessarily understand why my accent was the way that it is was the way that it was and that was mostly because I just got sent to schools outside of where I grew up in where did you grow up I grew up in Strandfontein and I mean during apartheid that was like a colored area and uh, my family's Afrikaans and everything. I was just raised English. And I got sent to schools outside of the area. Um, I guess my parents just wanted me to get big opportunities and better opportunities. I don't know. But then interacting with kids in the neighborhood was really hard because it's just like, why do you speak like that? You know, do you think you're better than us? And it's just like, I don't even understand why you're coming at me sideways because I, I just speak like this because I do. Um, yeah, so I was a shy kid, but I think deep down inside, I always felt like I had a voice and felt like I had something to say. And for a long time, I wanted to be a journalist. I thought that that was the, the channel that this voice of mine would kind of go out in. Um, I wanted to be like the next Zebra Pate and like an investigative journalist and, you know, go into like the carte blanches of the world, go into like the deep darkest of areas and just discover truth until I found out that truth is not something that can be found. Um, or I don't even know if it exists, to be honest. Um, yeah, and I think at the end of high school, during job shadowing, I then went to a community radio station, a Christian radio station, and just realized that, like, this feels good. This feels comfortable. Like, I need to pursue this. Um, and then I studied at Varsity, and immediately from first year, jumped into radio. And I haven't stopped. Right. So first of all, like before we continue, I like your hair. Thank you. Most of my, <laughs> most of my listeners know how I am with like natural hair. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so before we go on with the story, do you want to just talk a little bit about the trip? Because we were supposed to do this podcast uh, three or four weeks ago, but mm -hmm. you had to go to the UK. Yeah. What happened? On the trip? Hmm. Okay. What was it all about? I feel like you went from my hair to the trip. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure what you were asking. Um, so London in particular. Sure. Man, London was so good. So actually, I had this vision board that I drew up um, probably about two years, in 2017 now, probably three years ago now. And um, on it was a couple of pictures that I had drawn, just kind of doodled. And one of them was a radio with very specific radio stations on it. Another one was, um, I think, just music in general. And then there was one with a TV and my face in it. Well, a cartoon version of myself anyway. And a globe as well. So just kind of seeing 2016 roll out, like looking back, you know, it's just crazy that everything on this vision board has come to pass. And London was one of those things. I was supposed to go last year, but it ended up um, being in 2017. and such a great way to start off my year oh my gosh it was really amazing it was super cold obviously it's winter on that side um but obviously that's like just a minor minor point it was so incredible the fact that like my passion took me to a major city in the world like what that's so crazy and um i got to shoot my first television show which is just so insane uh which was the um the prize of the tlc africa competition and yeah, man, it just, it's open doors. Right. But did you imagine this happening? Like uh, in the last two years, say, what were you thinking? <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> um, last year definitely was the biggest year in terms of my career of my entire life. I remember in 20, 
Wait, I finished honors in 2014, 2013, 2014. And for eight months after I'd finished my honors, I didn't have a job. And I was really like disillusioned and distraught because I was just like, what am I doing? It's August already and I haven't earned a thing. I'm traveling on a bus from Strandfontein to almost town, basically, to UCT every day. Doing what? For what reason? But I think deep down inside, I knew that like radio was something I needed to do. I just don't think I had the confidence to step into the commercial side. Because, I mean, as disillusioned as I was, it was comfortable. It was just like, I get to do this every day. My parents provide dinner every day. Like, I'm good. Um, but yeah, it took a special someone to like send my demo through to radio stations for things to happen. And I didn't even, like, I'm still trying to understand how this all came about. Like, why did uh, my program manager open the specific email with my demo and listen to it? Because I'm sure he gets thousands of demos a day. Mm. And uh, I just think it's my, my plan in life and my path. So over the, the years in college, is that what you were trying to do? To be a presenter on some radio show? Yeah, I mean, I went from being a newsreader, which I hated. Like, why would you want to be the deliverer of bad news? It doesn't make any sense to me. Every single day, like, mm -hmm. you come into a room with a dark cloud and everyone's just depressed because now you've announced that, like, five kids have died and, like, this person, yeah, has gone through life. Um, so I quickly moved from, from newsreading to um, hosting my own brand show. And then from there, I think it moved to a lunch show, which was what I had for, for a while afterwards. And I studied English, anthropology and um, media. And at a point thought that I wanted to pursue anthropology, which I did my honors in as well. Um, but I think for my mental health sake, I needed to step away from that. Like it just, it was the best decision I made, but also completely ruined me. So, right. yeah. So uh, just to take us back a little bit, what did your parents wanted you to be, to become? I think my parents have always been super supportive of like wherever I was going. Um, I think they didn't necessarily understand presenting as a career, mm. um, as I'm sure most of the old school parents. Yeah, course, sure. They like that, right? They're like, what do you mean you're going to stand there and talk to a TV? Like, it doesn't make sense. You know no. what I mean? No, <laughs> not art. I don't think you should go that direction. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were always super supportive. I think they just wanted me to be happy. And whatever brought that on, as long as it came with a check, like, that was good. And it was really amazing because when I won this competition, the TLC one, uh, they got to fly with me to Joburg. And for them to witness that this is a thing and I just won this competition, <laughs> which is going to take me places. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I think they were kind of shook and they were like, okay, we get it now. Just explain a little bit what's the TLC, what's TLC exactly? Because some of the listeners mm -hmm. here are from some places that I don't even know quite sure. TLC is, yeah. Tender love and care. <laughs> so TLC is a um, channel on TV. It's worldwide. It started in the US, but went global. It's in the UK, a couple of in Asia, um, and also on our African continent. And um, on our side, it's on DSTV. So it's just one of the channels you can select to watch. And they were looking for a presenter for a particular show. And the competition was called TLC's Next Great Presenter Africa, which is huge because it's across the entire continent. And yeah, I just submitted my audition tape very last minute. And thankfully I did so because I won. Congratulations. Thank That's you. Amazing. <laughs> so was it the same thing with going to the UK? Was it, is it related? Yes, for sure. So then um, after like quite a grueling boot camp in presenting, which is very different to radio presenting, like TV presenting is a completely different ball game. Um, it did help being a radio presenter, I guess, but just like now having to use your arms on camera, it's just like, what are these things next to me that I have to now use? Um, yeah, it was, it was a really interesting journey. From there, they cut down, so they chose 13 people in general. They cut down from 13 to six to a top three over like a four day period, which was really, really intense. And from then we had to campaign for people to vote for us. And we knew that the winner would go to London. So that was more motivation to be like, vote for me. I need to go to the UK. Um, thankfully, like South Africa was behind me. And thank you again. <laughs> and um, yeah, that the, the prize was to present a show in London that was shot in London. Right. And just to also get the London experience, which was very good. <laughs> 
You sound pretty happy to see you. Right? I'm <laughs> like, so happy, guys. Like you just so came so back excited. yesterday. Yes, it <laughs> when, feels when, like when, it. When did this all happen? Like in the last week? Last Brad, week. feels like it was just yesterday, but um, it happened about two to three weeks ago, I think. Oh, the okay, beginning of <laughs> yeah. What are we now? Feb. Yeah. Feb. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Feb. Yeah. 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 So what is, are you always like this, vibey and happy? Mm, I think so. Um, on days that I'm not like completely bummed out about the world and the state that we're in right now, I guess I feed off people's energy. Like I'm a big mm. believer in energy. And if I'm in a good space with good people, then yeah, I'm vibesy and bubbly and energetic. All right. So what is it that you believe the most that most people don't agree you on? What do you mean? Like, do you have something that you believe strongly that most people kind of disagree with you? Oh my gosh, I don't think so. I think I'm a very give you an example. person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me an example. I believe that we can live in a world without war at all. But I know most people don't agree with that. Wow. Yeah. Sure, that's really interesting. Um, I have to censor myself because some conversations are best left like to the bedroom, you know what I mean? Between you and somebody that completely understands your mind. Mm. Um, <sighs> what do I believe in? I believe um, that women and men are equal. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people don't agree with me. Uh, okay. um, yeah, so I don't know. I guess I am very impassioned by race politics and gender politics. And I know that we are moving in a very positive direction in terms of the world, but I see it every day um, like the backlash of very simple things in terms of being a woman in the world and mm. trying to even match up to a man. That sounds a little bit strange, but just trying to even get the same paycheck as a man or walk down a street without being harassed. Because, mm. um, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys walk down the street every day. You don't get cackled, do you? You don't get, right? Do you, you get don't get. Do you get whistled Man, at? Get. Do you get drooled at? Do you get groped at while walking down the street? I don't think so. So I think just kind of being a woman is a very defined act and stepping into that as well. And a lot of people don't necessarily get it. Yeah. Right. Being a brown woman too. That's a strong belief. And having that so. sort of view when you are in this competition against mm -hmm. other people, do they hold the same view or not? Some people, I guess, with some people, their because priorities are different. Right, just try to oh. speak a little closer. Yeah, to because, like, obviously, not everyone, even a woman, agrees with that. They want Completely, to. yeah. They say they do. But, but they don't necessarily. Like, deep down, something they, when you ask them more deep questions, you find, like, actually, it's not so true. Yeah. So it's interesting to know, like, in a competition like that, mm. what's the sort of general consensus? Oh, it yeah. was interesting. I don't know if we ever really spoke about this i know with a couple of the guys i won't mention names or maybe i should name and shame i don't know um but we we got into conversation around the dinner table and it was very interesting the kind of viewpoints that would come out and it was it was like casual sexism and it's just like what do you just do you just say what i think you said and for me it's such a shock that people still think that way that are my age but um at the same time it's just like maybe not everyone thinks like I think. That's why I'm saying it. It's a, a defined act to even, I guess, be woke, um, right. whatever that means. But to be aware of um, structural biases. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So, on that very same note, on the competition, say mm. I like hacks. I like how to do things quicker. I know it's it sounds absurd, but if you had to break down the process of the competition to five steps that would make somebody win or that made you win uh, as like um, in a two set kind of thinking what would you say are the five most important things that would get somebody to win it i'd say firstly that's nonsense because <laughs> there is no five-step program yeah. <laughs> to right. getting to the top everyone is different everyone's journey is different mm. and that's why I get so hesitant when people are like, oh my gosh, I admire you, like you're an inspiration, because I'm just like, I'm just pushing my hustle on this side, bro. Like, all I can do for you is to say, which is something that I've kind of adapted, trust your dopeness, like trust what you have to offer the world, because we don't have the same things. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you just have to believe, like have such strong self-belief, which again is also a defined act, because the world prefers people to not be that way, uh, for things to move on comfortably. 
and it's just like no you just have to really i think um find what's like in your backpack of life and just see what works for you and push that yeah. and it's really difficult like people think presenting is glamorous and so amazing but like personally i feel like every day is a battle every day is a struggle because what am i doing you know what i mean i'm getting up and trying to convince the world that like i should be talking to you on a daily basis on the radio oh, yeah. i hard. should be the face that you invite into your home on a daily basis too on tv mm. and um yeah i think mostly it just requires self belief above everything else like you've got to believe in yourself and don't wait for validation on yeah. instagram in real life like we all definitely like search for that but you can't rely on it cuz it's not reliable you've got to just somehow believe in what you have like i had moments during the competition where i would sit on the bathroom floor wherever we were and just be like oh my gosh what's happening you've got to pull yourself towards yourself and realize the the bigness of this mm-hmm. I feel like that's a Donald Trump thing to say but how great mm-hmm. this moment is and like um just believe that you can do it because you you're very capable yeah, yeah. so in in a lot of things that I've been involved with um I always go into something new thinking that I know what to do and I hit a wall somewhere or something happens I'm like oh fuck mm-hmm. I did know that I would experience this mm-hmm. So my scapegoat is usually YouTube videos and books. Yeah. Did you ever meet something like that? You're like, oh shit! I think I wasn't prepared for this. And what did you do? There was no time for YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> do you mean in the competition in particular? No, just like life? generally uh, in your career, like t- career. TV present presenting, which yeah. you started recently. Well, again, I don't think there is a specific five step way of getting anywhere. And yeah. I mean, people have inboxed me to be like, listen, what, what are the steps I can take? Do I need to study anything? Or like, where yeah. do I go? And I'm just like, I don't even know. Like, things happen to me by the grace of God. Like, I am just st- sitting here like, what? I don't even understand what's happening. But um, YouTube definitely helps in mm. every, every aspect of life. Because I think people see it as a business now mm. or for a while. That, like, if there's a gap, I'm going to create a video about that. So if you look up anything, it's there. And, um, I mean, for castings, for example, before I did it, which is very daunting because you're up against experienced actors, models, everything else. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm almost like one and a half meters. I'm really tiny. <laughs> I'm like 1.63. It's very intimidating to step into that space. And, yeah, YouTube helps, man. It really does. And otherwise, I just think it's important to have a very strong network of support. that yeah. will carry you through like if that's your friend your family or dog kind of i just think it really helps <laughs> to you what is it what is that it's my family right. um my partner in life mm. um my close friends who i regard as family and it's also very close knit um, mm. like five six people and also yeah i've got a dog <laughs> okay no. very tiny a handbag dog <laughs> he's not here right now all right do you choose friends or it just happens dynamically Sure man, I chose about You know what? Yeah, I would say I chose my friends because I've had a lot of friendships throughout the years and a lot of them have faded and I feel like the ones that are around I've chosen to stick with them mm-hmm. because again of the energy levels like man, my friends are the best. They like they provide different quotas of different things for me. Right. Be it like joy or even because I struggle with anxiety I've got a friend that deals with the same sort of lived reality and it's just like bro I'm here for you like yeah. it's okay um and yeah it's just really fulfilling having friends that aren't in the friendship um selfishly like it's just really nice to be able to be yourself around them without feeling um nervous about being vulnerable and stuff right yeah so then getting into television for example what is the hardest part about uh being on TV because it looks all glamorous mm. and awesome like most of gr- most of the girls like it yeah. everybody want to be there look it's glamorous i'm not going to take <laughs> that away it's i feel like it's a really really cool thing to do with your life you know right. what i mean like we we can't take that away from anything um growing up i used to consume media like it was air yeah. and um that's one of the reasons why i'm i'm doing what i'm doing because 
I okay I'm just gonna derail from your question for a second um, like growing up I saw a lot of like white faces and white bodies in all the media I consumed and mm. having ambitions of being a journalist or a TV presenter whatever it may be seemed almost impossible because I was like but I mean I love this but I don't see anyone that looks like me so how, yeah. do, how do I break into that and um, yeah so I think it's really important that I am um, visible because I feel like other girls other brown girls need to know that it's okay but your question was <laughs> uh, don't worry about it <laughs> oh the most difficult part about TV uh, again the self-belief thing it's really tough I mean um, the lived experience as a woman is significantly different um, to men and I feel like we're always pitted against one another be it amongst ourselves or men being like ah she's hotter than this one mm -hmm. oh I like her face I like her booty I like her hair natural hair yeah. <laughs> or weaves whatever it may be um, and it's really really tough and it's really easy to fall into like the spiraling black hole of staying on Instagram being like oh my god look at Minnie Lamini like mm. she is slaying because of these reasons oh my yeah. gosh look at Roxanne Curley like she's great because of this reason you know the list goes on and on and again you just have to focus yourself and be like believe in what you have that's true actually i know roxanne and she's like phenomenally hard working you know? oh my gosh she's, she's amazing shout out to rox she's yeah. amazing <laughs> and yeah so most uh, a lot of girls right now like, just to refer to the instagram side of things mm -hmm. uh, everybody want to be famous and on television want to be like the instagram celebrity or something like that mm -hmm. But then if I closely look at uh, the two different individuals, the one who is trying to be on Instagram famous, whatever, or the one who is actually on TV or famous already, mm -hmm. the difference is for the one who is actually famous already, or I see his work, like they work really, really hard. Yeah. The others they just take photos and put on Instagram or whatever. Yeah. Um, they know their way around Visco Cam. <laughs> exactly. Could you just explain the difference, what it, what it takes or what it is exactly? It's exactly that. It's hard work. Um, it is glamorous, I guess, because you are, I mean, you get to walk red carpets, you get to look absolutely beautiful when you're on screen because you have a glam squad behind you. Mm. But beyond that, like, it's really, really tough. And it is a lot of hard work. There's scripts to be learned. There's a director that wants a particular vision mm. that needs to be carried out and you have to carry that out. So I think that beauty takes you so far. And shout out to beautiful people, like do your thing. But talent is where it's at. And I'm a firm believer in that. I'm just like, don't tell me I'm beautiful. Like compliment my skill, compliment my talent. That I appreciate way more. Um, and yeah, I think that's the difference between Instagram models and everyone else. And the other question is, how, if you had to split it between the unglamorous part and glamorous part, how do you split it? What do you mean, how do so I like, split it? So like, in other words, there's a lot of things that to people's eyes, they perceive them as being glamorous, a lot of career parts. Mm. But then when you speak to the person, you're like, what do you do day to day? Yeah. And you find out, well, actually I'm doing a lot of mundane things during yeah. the day. So I find like, well, I'm sure about it, but I find a lot of people, like, this, I work in the investment world, but they all think, yeah, you're gonna, you, know, you can reap the reward. And you ask them, what do you do? And I spend, you know, you spend 10, 11 hours behind the desk, mm. into a spreadsheet, and to the average person, that's very mundane, but that's what it takes. To get right, to, to get, right? Yeah. So, equivalently, I would ask, like... Admin, mm. that's yeah. it, that's my days. I yeah. mean, if I'm not going to castings, if I'm not on air, which now is, like... Mm reduced to about twice a week for weekends yeah. like Monday to Friday it's admin admin it's emails which mm. I suck at like I'm really bad because for me I've never been in a, a proper office space I went from studying into radio so it's mm. just like how do I do this what is this computer thing that I have to work now um yeah so it's just emails it's keeping up to date with all of that and also largely especially now um social media like yes we spoke about Instagram mm. models and we laughed but I really have so much respect for people that do gain followings like that because it's just like you kind of understand what need what people need what they not aspire to be but just like what they want to see and what they want to divulge in and everything and it's like I am still learning that game because um, yeah social media is an entire monster like yeah. in and of itself and and it's not well defined 
it's not well defined which really stresses me out it's like if you could just give me the parameters and be like that's what you do i'd be happy i think people don't realize that the best part about social media is that you can become a celebrity and the worst part about it is that you can become a celebrity. exactly exactly so like the more like anything you say anything you do is suddenly up for judgment yeah and everything. that's that like a lot of people are not willing to take that yeah, yeah. And I do think part of that is unfair because social media, I feel like initially was a space to just kind of um, either reinvent yourself or just explore who you are. Like Twitter is, oh, the platform's lit, like people really go in, but it's like you've got to be careful and that sucks. But at the same time, I guess mm. people need to be held accountable. I have to be honest, I still don't know how to use Twitter. Yeah, I really don't Twitter, understand. I it. don't get it. I'm <laughs> well, on it. When I get a follow, I'm happy. I mean, Twitter, Twitter <laughs> help when the Cape Town fires were going on, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But on average, I mean, most people, like, they try to be, you can't be deep in 140 characters. It's like, tough. Yeah. It's so, like, a skill. It's, it's, it takes a lot. And even if, you tr- if you tr- even if you're getting somewhere, most of the time you're missing a lot. Yeah. So, That's what <laughs> people have that, threads. So, like, like, click here like to whole, read these 40. Oh, yeah. You, know, yeah, you need yeah. like a whole background. Unless you're Donald yeah. Trump. He's really good at it. He's just like 140 really characters. Really and really bad. Then, I don't I think know. Good at this like, I think, look, who can be the president at the same time tweet every fucking two hours? <laughs> That's hardcore. They need to take his phone away from him. But, but that's because yeah. he's not being a president. Yeah. yeah. That's because he is spending his time on Twitter <laughs> yeah. going sad, bad, yeah. mad. <laughs> Speaking of social media, actually, mm. I used to, th- I was actually, <laughs> it was a delusion. I used to think of social media as something that can be engineered, you know? So when I was chatting to, my, to a friend of mine who's um, a writer now for uh, Huffington Post, he was sure. t- telling me about yeah. all these things. So I was like, I think I don't need social media, blah, blah, blah. So it's one of the reasons I started a podcast, actually. Yeah. So I was like, I can grow the podcast, you know, just engineer the, mm. the fucking social, like Facebook does. Mm. And then I went into it. It's really hard. You know, it it's harder. Tough. It's really tough. And so, everything has become like a business now. Yeah. You have to think. Excuse me, you have to think that way. But then the thing is, what works, what I realized that it works, it's really about people. People must feel, I think it's all about... Authenticity. Uh, exactly, yeah. yeah. And transparency. Just mm-hmm. like people want to see the real stuff. They're tired of all this branded out. Ads For sure. And Which I feel like I'm still exploring that. And it's really difficult because you always have to, I think, in my position, find mm-hmm. this line between being like relatable but aspirational. So it's like I want to just put my guts on social media and be like guys listen i'm just a normal woman out here trying to do my thing Mm. don't put me on a pedestal but at the same time i'm like i guess you can kind of put me on a mini pedestal (laughs) i'll take a step up it's cool um but yeah it's just really tough and i think that so many um people in the same position i'm in maybe in a couple of years ahead of me um i don't see examples that i relate to at all a lot of them are very like almost like in a box of like this beautiful girl yeah. who's packaged very well and like it is packaged it's, actually. she's sellable and it's yeah. just like uh i'm not trying to do that mm. um so that makes like the social media game a little bit tougher but you're right it's all about transparency i think mm. but then how do you balance like um i guess for other people it's different but in your industry, there's mm. the person that people know on the screen and the other one that know it's like the person so sometimes you always have to create two different personas yeah. to sell on the other side and then you are a different person in real life. Mm. I don't know if that's the case with you and how do you balance that? Or I think, I can't really speak for other people, but maybe people find comfort in separating that like business and mm. real life sort of thing. But I think because, this is just my opinion, because of my career is me, like I'm selling myself, I'm selling my bra- mm. myself as a brand. I can't differentiate between the two. Yeah. Like who you see on tv is me yeah i'm following the script but that's me who i am on radio is me i'm not gonna become a different person i can't live that way i think i live sometimes too transparent but like a very transparent life i live a very honest life and i need to like i feel like you need to walk in truth and walk in your own truth and um that's the only way to success so if you had what what are, what would be your fears on what would change in the next two years if your career grows exponentially from what it is now? 
what are my fears if it grows what, exponentially? Yeah, what would happen that you'd be worried my about? Anxiety will be lit. <laughs> it really will be tough. But I think that that's the hope. You know okay. what I mean? So like, I'm really um, prepping myself for that. And I think that I'd, I'd entered presenter competitions before. I'm a big believer in timing. Mm. And it's just like, I wasn't ready. I definitely wasn't ready. And even though sometimes I still feel like I'm not ready because it does feel very big and um, mm. not tangible. I'm just like, oh, it's so abstract. I can't grab onto it. Um, I think I'm way more prepped now. Mm. And I think in two years, that's more than enough time for me to be able to handle whatever's coming i don't believe that i'll ever get to like the status of michael jackson and i'm very okay with that mm -hmm. i think that no human should ever have gone through that because he's super talented yes one of the most talented people in our time but to for people to stand next to you and almost die and faint and be like hyperventilating because of who you are it's just like that's a human being why are you freaking out? I don't even get that. Um, so I don't want to get to Michael Jackson levels. Yeah. I just want to get to a point where it's like, I'm, I'm influential. Mm. It That's be, it. It might be unavoidable. It might be unavoidable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to walk down the street and like be, have to have like 50 guys around me to protect me from people. Like oh, yeah, when I am yeah, a person, I, I, yeah. you know what I mean? I don't get that. And I don't. I hope to never get to that point. I don't think it'll happen in Cape Town because no one cares about celebrities in Cape Town. Um, but if I move to Joburg, like I hope that that mm. it might happen. But I, I hope that I won't have to walk with bodyguards. Yeah, that's it. I, I don't know how one could do that. Just like you have bodyguards all the time. Now your whole life become almost. Become a, you know, yeah, just yeah, like it's weird, right? I still like to go to the Eastern Bazaar, grab some food. I want to eat some twenty rand <laughs> meals. I want to have a happy meal every now and then. Like. Yeah, and go to Mzoli's without anybody following you. Yeah. That's, that's like and without fun. it being a news story. Oh, yeah. Chris at Mzoli's. Yeah. No, guys. I was just enjoying a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> okay, say it happens now, what you're talking about. Somebody see you there, it's a story. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? What would be your reaction? I'd Don't read react. it. I'd laugh. Um, I mean, if it's like a gossipy story, I wouldn't give it energy. Mm -hmm. I'd just leave it as is. And if it's like a funny story, I'd retweet it. Like, why not? Um, cause weirdly enough, I don't think I'm a celebrity. I don't think I'm huge. I think I'm getting to a point of influence, but mm. it's a journey. But, um, I think it was as soon as I came back from London, there was like some very weird rumors going around that I have no idea where they came from. And I was just like, is this a taste of what is going to happen? Yeah. You know, um, I'm just like, people are really bored and oh, yeah. trying to come up with stuff. People want to get clicks, you know, yeah, clickbait. Yeah, clickbait. <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah. uh, Rad, is there anything you want to talk about? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Rad, <laughs> a long day. I've had a brutal day at work. Yeah, <laughs> day. But you want to drink more beers after this? I think yeah. he deserves yeah, it. I think we can do that. Five yeah. years. Five years, yeah. It's a milestone. This is apparently good wine. You must check it out. What do you think? I'm enjoying it. I think mm -hmm. it's delicious. Yeah, it's very really good. Mm. Woolworth, nothing special, but yeah. <laughs> Subtle advertising much? <laughs> oh, fuck. They have to cut me a check right now. Huh? Thanks, Woolies. <laughs> yeah. So, like two years ago, how was your... What has changed in terms of your day and today? Yeah. Um, so everything has changed over the past year, I would say. Um, in terms of my growth as a human being, like I feel like I've evolved. I'm almost in Super Saiyan level. I'm just like, the my rapid growth has been so uncomfortable. It's so crazy because growth is uncomfortable. It's necessary, but like it's been really crazy. Um, so two years ago, I don't even know if I was the same person. Like I've shared so many layers. Um, but in terms of a day-to-day, -day, I was a student a couple of years ago, so my day-to-day -day was going to varsity, attending some lectures, <laughs> mm. um, yeah, just like chilling with friends mostly where I could. A lot of my time was taken up by traveling because I lived quite far from mm. varsity, so like taking buses and taxis and stuff, which I would never take back because I feel like that definitely... Um, instilled a sense of humbleness <laughs> patience <laughs> and patience <laughs> definitely um and it was kind of fun I, I like being alone like i like my alone time so it was actually really nice traveling for a long period of time um i say that like it was two hours it was just like half an hour to 40 minutes <laughs> um yeah so that's mostly what's changed just the fact of like handing in assignments 
um, regularly to now like managing my own life. So to the girls or guys there that are trying to take almost the same route as what you're doing now, yeah. what would you recommend that they do and what should they avoid as mistakes that you wish you knew if you didn't actually hmm. I think one mistake that I go through daily is to like, I always say, so I'm 24 now, hmm. I'm always like, I wish I'd started sooner. But also I can't say that because I mean, I did four years of varsity, so where would that have gone? Um, so never live with regrets, <laughs> one thing, just like move on with whatever, wherever you are in life right now. But I think a really important thing is actually to put in work. I think a lot of people in any job that they want to do glamorize it and like romanticize this idea of being an accountant, of being a sound engineer, of being a, a social entrepreneur or digital strategist, you know, or a presenter. And it's just like, yeah, it's great to think about it, but do you know what goes into it? Like, you've got to put in time. You've got to either study for a long period of time or like me, put in four years of campus mm -hmm. radio before you can even think about going into commercial. Like, you have to. Like, I have this guy that constantly inboxes me and he's just like, I can be a radio presenter, like I can be your co-host. And it's just like, you can't just do these things. Like, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't I, just yeah. happen. He's a hustler, that one. They yeah. just want to cut the code quick. <laughs> I think you send me a demo, guys. The one, the one commonality about all your professions, like artists, any sort yeah. of artist, be a yeah. presenter, host, mm. I think people underestimate just how competitive it is. Yeah. And I think they forget that. So it's, it's like, it's funny because my background that I know the world, this world I work in is competitive, but my, the degree that I studied allowed me an edge, allowed mm. me to get in maybe, because there's not many of us, right? Mm. But in your world, it could be anyone. There's a, you go to an audition and there's 150 people. Yeah, and, and how do they look them. like you? <laughs> exactly, and like, I think people are like, sort of have misguided in mm. that sense, that they don't realize just how much work it will take to get like the most minute of an edge. Yeah. So, I Thanks. That actually like puts yeah, so much in perspective. That, that, and I think, and I, I've got a good friend for example, and I use him a lot, but he's like a, he uses, he designs artworks on computers, right? And brilliant guy. He could have done PCOM, he was sporty, whatever, but he was mm -hmm. good at art, fine mm -hmm. art. He's very good. And he worked, like, you know, he worked outside of university to a point now where he's like the only, one of the few people in the country who can do this, but on weekends, mm. he's spending 8 to 16 hours a day sketching. Sure. Right. And pushing, he's already got the ability and pushing it one step further mm. all the time, right? And most people around him would say, okay, okay, but you were tempted. And like, yeah, that's great, but you don't understand. Like, just to, to push ahead and get, like, to the, only, to the point where the people around him that he has to look up to are all international. Sure. People in Japan, mm. San Francisco, or whatever. But most people don't see that. Mm. They they look at oh where he is now and be yeah. like oh finished yeah, products. Great. People look at finished products. That makes me really yeah. angry because yeah. I'm just like, mm. and I did this series called The Hustle Never Sleeps with mm. Good Up FM presenters yeah, yeah, at yeah, work. Yeah. yeah, it's on YouTube and like, because I felt as if a lot of people saw oh my gosh Leanne Williams is fabulous. She's on Expresso. She's mm. beautiful and she is all those things. But it's just like she wasn't always there. You have to understand that everything's a journey, everything's a process. Mm -hmm. you got to trust the process. you got to put in work into the process to be able to get to where you are. And don't stop. Like, yeah, your friend might be great, but like you said, he's putting in hours over the weekend. And no one's telling him to. It's just because mm. he wants to better himself and up his game. Yeah. And I think that not many people have that ambition. And, I mean, I commend him. And, um, yeah, I think I do. Because I'm always like what's next what's yeah. next yeah. which I think is a slight symptom of again anxiety but also I think it's important to always like up yeah. your game yeah okay so what's the this is a question for everyone now what's the downside of being so driven and uh, always trying to do the next big thing the downside yeah the downside is that maybe you, I don't know if this is a downside but you've got to focus in on a few things mm. Mm. it's difficult I caught myself up trying to do so sure. many things last yeah. year you yeah pull it rain in a lot of things and just say I want to do X, like yeah. three things or whatever it is maybe you start only your friend circles change because you gravitate towards certain people mm. that, yes. that inspire you or motivate you in a mm. different way um, whether that's a downside or an upside I, I don't know but I think it's actually it's, it's for your own progress so yeah. you look at it more it's positively it's painful but necessary right? yeah. Yeah. and the other thing maybe is that you know people might look at you differently like the way in which you're going about your life yeah and don't understand yeah. or have different views upon it and 
you can't let everyone else's definition mm. sort of define your own self worth and what you're trying to achieve, right? Mm. Mm. So those are sort of the things that you've got to start thinking about. But you know, hopefully, with all the effort, that there's longer term benefits to be had, and a lot of it is not going to come. You, you're not going to see it yeah. in like the next week, the next month, the next year. Yeah. Mm. And I think all and of to us me can. That's and, 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 and that's very really frustrating. Yeah. But <laughs> I think all of us can relate on that level that mm. all of this. Is the culmination of like years and years of yeah. thinking oh, yeah. about it and being 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 in the position to say, well, I have to do X, work, you know, mm. I have to do this, and yeah, again, people look at the finished product. And <laughs> That's why Rad is in this podcast, very yeah. analytical. Yeah. This yeah. Guy. I like <laughs> it though, bringing such cool perspective. Yeah, I also think a downside is mm. like, and I also go through this a lot. Mm. I sometimes really fail to see my progress. And oh, yeah. I think mm. only talking to friends or people close to me going, you need to take a step back and be like, mm. listen, you did some really cool mm. things or mm. big things. And I think because you're living in it, it's really hard to kind of be like, wait, did I just, did I just do that? Did I just come back from London? Mm. Like, mm. what just happened? And also, you can't wait for other people to make a big deal out of you because you can't expect that of the world. Like, mm. nobody. People are selfish. AF. Mm. Like, they don't care about your life. You have to make a big deal out of yourself and not in a way that's like, I'm fabulous, although yeah. you are fabulous. It's just like, you know what, I did this and it's great and you should consume all of it yeah. greedily. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's tough but so rewarding at the end of the day. If yeah, I like your point. Yeah. I mean, it's actually, it's almost hard to be content because you always want yeah, something man. more. Mm-hmm. But you've also got to tell yourself, actually, you know what, this... You have to be content in the yeah, moment. Drink a well, beer, right? have yeah. a glass of wine. Yeah. You did a you good need job. To reward yourself now and again. Yeah. yeah. For me, it has always yeah. been switching off. It's mm. like if I'm with friends, I'm still fucking yeah. thinking of something <laughs> that I'm not supposed to. Yeah. You know that can get frustrating sometimes. Mm. But yeah, you know, we still go for beers with Rad. <laughs> <laughs> it's always trips. there to have a beer with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Everyone needs a friend like that. Yeah. Yeah, man, it was good to have you here. Thank you. Thanks so much. This was lovely. Cool. Is there anything you would like to share? The same. Before we close? Well, shameless plug. <laughs> um, so the, the series that I shot in London is going to be airing from the 23rd of Feb. Mm-hmm. So in just a couple, like three weeks from now, which on is TLC. huge. On TLC, which is channel 135 on DSTV. And I've heard that it's also in DSTV Compact, so you have no excuse if you have the smaller bouquet. Um, yeah, and it'll be really cool if everyone just like tuned in and watched. I think it's really also important to celebrate your own. Like, I'm a South African girl born and bred, you know? Mm. And if you're from Cape Town, I mean, I'm Cape Town born and bred. And this to me is when I, again, take a step back and realize it's such a big thing. Like, this is a global platform. And um, I'm proud of this moment. And I know that I wouldn't be here without everyone supporting me. So it will be great if people could celebrate me and celebrate with me, which has been happening, but in the way of like clicking on your TV and actually sitting down and welcoming me, welcoming me into your home. Um, that would be really lovely. Yeah. But otherwise, keep swimming, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> and I do think it's important for people to realize that things take time and you got to just put in the work. And eventually when it is your time, it's going to be magical. Cool. And just a few tips on hair, how to keep your Right. We're coming back to the hair. Yeah. Um, that's like another podcast, I feel. <laughs> just so maybe a one minute podcast. One minute. Yeah. Um, so I've been on a natural journey for like two years now, going mm-hmm. on to three. I am... Um, Cut off May a couple years ago again, it came with like just being more conscious and aware and frustrated with the world. And um, YouTube literally saved my life because no one around me had hair like mine, not even my mom. And I think that in many ways, I mean, she can try to help me, but there's a very particular way to like look after natural hair that people of color don't get taught, which is why besides the Eurocentric standards, why people go to like blow drying and relaxing and straightening. It's just supposedly easier. But yeah, YouTube's your friend, man. There's a huge online natural hair community that really is so helpful. And coconut oil is also mm. bliss. <laughs> you know, it's funny because if I look at um, when I came to Cape Town, wherever I see a colored girl with natural hair, mm-hmm. I always thought they were black. It's hard to distinguish the two just because Well, of let's hair. be honest. I mean, we are all black. Yeah. Apartheid ruined us. Yeah, sure. But yeah, I mean, I'm a colored girl. No, I am still a colored girl. <laughs> I am. Yeah. 
So it was just like, okay, I thought every, everyone's hair was like straight, but I heard, oh, it's straightened up and stuff like cool. that. Cool. Oh, okay. Well, that's... You learn very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we can close. Thank you and good night. Sweet. Cool. <laughs> yeah, man. Cheers, man. And that was it and thanks for listening and I gotta go feed the penguins. I hope you had fun and you learned something from this. You know the whole point for this podcast is to learn from other people and become the better version of ourselves, both you and me. So yeah, I hope you had fun. I've gotta go. Just remember to subscribe if you haven't already. This comes out every week, like once a week. So if you subscribe, you will get updated. You can do it via iTunes or your podcast app if you're using iPhone. You can do it on my podcast as well, on my website, sorry. You just go on my website. There is a subscribe tab there where you can just slot in. And we keep in touch. Stay amazing. Ciao.